if I've got this in the right order, item number 23, 23. So, um, and then we'll go back to item 22. Right, so we have a, um, a, a, a recommendation um, on the on the table. Is there? Um, well, let's let's perhaps if you'd like to brief us first on the on the paper, and then uh, we'll ask questions, and then we'll seek to consider the resolution. <clears throat> well, good afternoon. Um, we come here today with this pro uh, proposal uh, after working with the city mission to see how the Christchurch City Council could support and address emergency housing needs in Christchurch. And so the proposal today is to refit the old City Mission building with uh, two uh, flats upstairs and one downstairs to provide emergency housing with approximately seven bedrooms. So this is um, indeed a combined proposal because as you can see from the report, uh, the government through MB um, have indicated that they will contribute $100,000 towards the proposal and $38,971 from the Social Housing Fund towards the configuration of the old City Mission building. Additionally, in the following report um, is a recommendation to support the costs, associated costs of a support worker through the Metropolitan Discre Discretionary Fund. And um, also we, we're looking, um, we're recommending that we consider further ongoing operational funding for this project through the next 2015-25 LTP process to address housing, uh, emergency housing needs in a sustainable way. And we're also saying that staff continue to work with the City Mission and we have um, a City Missioner uh, Michael Gorman here with us today uh, to investigate the potential of additional ongoing contribution towards this project by the Ministry of Social Development. So I think the project is fairly explanatory about what we're seeking to do and uh, as I said it's, it's been a delight to be working with the City Mission and MB um, on this project. Well, I mean I'll just add to that myself, um, not with a question, but simply to say that you know, if we were looking for an example of the collaborative partnership that we've said is so vital for our city to recover, then this would be a, a fantastic effort, council, um, city mission and government working hand in hand. Um, so I'm absolutely thrilled about it. Glenn Livingstone. Thank you. I'm delighted with this, this, this model, this way of working, and I'm also delighted that the government, um, in the context of this which came from the Housing Committee, has now come forward and said that they... Uh, there's an RFP at the moment for 40 um, emergency accommodation units, so mm. I'd like us all please to, to see this in the context of that. Yeah. that it's, it's all part of that. It's so this picture. is not only about three, it's actually about four. Yeah. Phil? Um, look, thank you for the report, and, and the idea certainly in working in a partnership appeals a lot, I think, to us as councillors, but I just wanted to clarify around the ongoing nature of the, of the programme. So that involves a support worker, and is that funding, and that's a, clearly a, a, a new, a different role for, count, for council, and, and I'm supportive of it. Mm. But I'm just clarifying about the funding for that. Is that sort of part of the operational costs which would be would go to the Metropolitan Discretionary Fund, or is it, I presume, I'm presuming it would be a separate application? Is that be part of those separate applications? Yes, it's a, it's a separate application, Councillor Clearwater, and it's in the next report that um, we can address it. Um, then, if you'd like. Yeah. We're going to go backwards to number oh, 22. Yes. Okay. Item 22. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yanni? Thank you. I don't, I don't think anyone would disagree that obviously emergency housing is really important. What, what I can't understand though is given that the government are going out for an RFP for 40 units, um, why we're funding this? Like, couldn't, couldn't we actually have government? Uh, maybe we could give... Uh, a contribution, but government should actually be reimbursing us for that. If they're going to go out and pay private people for motel rooms, as we heard the other day, then why wouldn't they be paying for 
this as well, and why should we be paying for it given our fin a huge financial situation that we're in? It just seems a bit strange to me. So I'd just like to understand why or what work's being done around actually government paying for the cost of this. Well, I don't know that staff should be um, reflecting on that. Yeah, oh, okay. um, and Vicky and, and Glenn both want to respond to that, and, and David's got his hand up as well. So okay. I had two other questions, but I'll deal with that one first. Yeah, so Vicky the, and then this Glenn. This started um, from the Christchurch City Council asking City Mission what's happening with your old building that doesn't seem to be being used, and the City Mission being incredibly responsive um, to that. So actually this was going to be funded entirely by the Christchurch City Council um, because we know the need for housing and just the issues that we face every day in that area. The government came on board with half of it in the spirit of the housing accord. Um, so actually this predates the, the government's second announcement. Um, and I guess one of the things that would be really helpful to know, because I need to tell them <laughs> later this afternoon, is um, when this will be open, and is it adaptable enough such that if the next tranche deals with mostly women and children, that this can be used for other groups? I'm probably looking at Michael. <laughs> Pick up the audience. <laughs> Come on up. Feel free to join us, Michael. <laughs> Um, we, we have a, a real energy for this project and we would like it to be open as soon as possible so we've already lined up contractors on the off chance um, and we, we think that possibly in about six weeks time six we weeks. could um, have it going. Great. There are certainly the people are waiting to get in. Yeah. Um, and the other issue about using it if it wasn't used for... Um, so in a, in a year's time for example if or six months or whatever if we find another um, project that deals with women and children and that that area is, say, diminishes, um, could this, because they're just units, I'm assuming that they could be used for guys who are currently living on the street as well. Yeah, we'd be reluctant to extend too much um, uh, our mission to street people. We feel that um, we have quite a history and are covering quite an area with 30 men in the night shelter and we're looking at extending our women's night shelter. Right. Um, we um, are a bit concerned act actually that um, the, the community um, need uh, isn't for those people quite as great because a lot of them choose, from a limited menu, choose the lifestyle they lead. And most of the people that are being talked about being housed um, who are street people have in fact had numerous opportunities through us and other agencies like ours anyway. Okay, so but we're I... certainly open to any variation. Um, that's been the mission's strength, uh, that we are able to respond. Okay, so I can tell the Minister that you'll be open on October the 1st. Is that fair, Mike? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we certainly hope we will be. <laughs> you, you, have a, you have an aspiration to be open by then. Thank you. Right. Thank you, thank you Mike. Um, Glenn? Thank you, just very quickly. I, I think just in response to Yanni's questions there, as Vicky said sequentially, we'd already gone down this path before the government came forward with their RFP. And the other part is there's a sense in which I think we have to show our bit, mm. our contribution. And if, if we weigh this up over and against the 40 that they're doing, I, th I think our contribution actually is, you know, quite small. So that, that would be my advice. Yeah. Uh, Yanni? Thank you. Um, Okay, I mean, I, I don't probably don't get into debate. I, I still can't understand the difference between the government paying private people to provide this and paying us, who have got a huge financial problem, but that's okay. Um, I just, the second question I had was, my understanding was Te Whare Roy Mata were having to move, and this was one of the locations that they were going to move. And I just wanted to know what was happening with Te Whare Roy Mata, which is a, I mean, we're being asked to fund a service to deal with these families Te Whare is a service that deals with a lot of people in this local community, and I just wanted to understand where they fit, if they fit into this plan, if it impacts on them, uh, where things are at with their, their premise, which I understood they were um, possibly needing to leave at some point. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, the, <coughs> the mission is running at quite a deficit, and we're looking at trying to um, rationalise uh, the buildings we own. So we are selling Te Whare Roi Mata. Uh, well over a year ago, we signalled this to them, 
and offered them uh, use of the building that we're now looking at for this project. They chose not to accept that. They have um, applied for funding through various agencies and have actually made an offer on their house to us. Uh, their funding's still very tricky. We're trying to support them in that. Um, but we've supported them really substantially for uh, well over 300,000 over the last 15 or so years. Uh, we feel we can't do that any longer to the same level. Um, but they were offered the building some time ago and they chose not to. <coughs> Um, you know, in terms of this this project, uh, is in terms of um, the, the kind of emergency nature of the housing, how how long will these units be available for people to stay in? Is there a kind of time limit, or what's the plan for? I guess having people be able to access it and then move move on. Well, the the government, um, the um, Ministry of Social Development's um, project requires them to move on in eight weeks. We think that's absolutely unrealistic, given the availability of low-cost rental at the moment. Uh, we're looking at perhaps three months with um, a flexibility within that, but the instruction that we'll be giving to our staff is that they have to constantly talk about this being transitional, that it is not their permanent home. And um, to that end, too, while it will be warm, safe environment, it won't be a luxurious environment, um, and I think from choice, um, most families wouldn't want to live in that particular locality. Um, David? <coughs> uh, thank you. Um, look, I support the initiative. I just really wanted to make a question of staff, really. The housing fund, A, how much is in it, and B, what is the impact um, to other uses of, of our housing fund and our own housing stock by um, utilising $38,000 of that funds. Right, so um, the current balance of the housing fund is uh, $21 million. And uh, we believe that the current housing strategy um, does include emergency housing provision. And for the contribution from the housing fund of $38,971, um, to, to provide seven uh, bedrooms uh, for emergency housing is good value for money. Thank you. Very good. All right, so would someone like to move that? Glenn, seconded by Vicky. Is there any discussion? Glenn, oh, sorry, Yanni. Um, <coughs> I'll, I'll support this. Um, I do appreciate the cooperation that's been shown with government and with the city mission. I think it's really important that we do get emergency housing put in place. Some of us have been saying that the housing crisis has been with us for a long time, at least over almost two years. So it's finally good to see some progress being made on what is a very important issue. I, I, if I have one concern, it's that as a council, we can't continually just keep giving out money for projects and not getting an income back, particularly around housing. When you think about how much money is being put into housing, how much money people are, are making from housing in our city at the moment, and we, and we can't financially just keep throwing money into this pit without getting something back. So I hope in future we can really look at these partnerships as a way of actually generating some revenue, even if it doesn't cover fully the cost, although it, ideally it, it should. It would be really important that we, you know, we just can't keep running at a, at a deficit, particularly with our current financial housing situation. But this is, I'm sure this will be well used, I'm sure it's well needed, and I wholeheartedly support the partnership approach. Uh, Phil? Um, look, I thoroughly support the whole, the whole project, there's no question of that. I guess I am concerned to learn about Te Whara Ramata, and I clearly, we want, as council, we want those discussions with them to be productive, and I'm sure they, they uh, we want a good outcome. The reason I'm concerned, of course, is that we, we know that Te Whara Ramata have been in, in the whole approach as a community development organisation is to prevent people requiring emergency housing and they've done a lot of work in the, in the housing, housing area themselves. So I, I'm very supportive and I, I certainly want to support too City Mission and, and finding a way forward to, I guess, um, ensure that Te Whare Ramata also um, have a good accommodation. And I know that's that start. I'm pleased that, that 
that process already started, Michael. Thank you. All right. I shall put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you very much.